Patrick may be a patron saint of all Ireland, but the true St. Patrick's country lies in these gentle hills of County Down. This is a magical land where a farmer carefully plows around this island of trees. Is this the site of a prehistoric settlement or a fairy ring? St. Patrick's country is a land that time forgot, a quiet corner of Northern Ireland. The special feature of the geography of this area are the drumlands, the little rolling hills, the soft green of the landscape, very fertile fields. And as you travel through St. Patrick's country, you go along little narrow roads where the hedgerows almost meet in the middle. And then you'll turn a corner and there'll be a little hamlet. And you can spend time going in, having something to drink or to eat and chat with the locals. 16 centuries ago, Patrick walked these fields and hills, but he didn't come from here. He was born in England, what was then Roman Britain. St. Patrick came from a very rich family in Romano Britain. His father was a deacon and he was actually studying at the time of his you know, capture into slavery by Irish raiders and he would have only been six, around 16 years of age at the time. In the town of Down Patrick they've opened the St. Patrick Centre which tells the story of the young man as he struggled to survive in a hostile land. Patrick wrote, more and more the love and fear of God came to me and my faith grew and my spirit was exercised until I was praying up to a hundred times every day and at night almost as often. Here on lonely Slemish Mountain, an old volcano in County Antrim, Patrick toiled as a shepherd. Ironically, Patrick, child of a wealthy family which owned slaves, ended up a slave himself. For six years, he lived in constant danger and fear. Eventually, he escaped and made his way to France, where he studied Christianity. In a dream, Patrick heard Ireland calling, and so he returned. And the rest, as they say, is history. In the footsteps of St. Patrick near Strangford Loch is Saul, where they say Patrick cured a man's horse and was given a barn as a present. On a nearby hill sits Castle Ward, it looks out over the land Patrick roamed in search of new souls. The 18th and 19th century gardens are based on Windsor Castle. There's 800 acres of parkland here and in the centre is um, the Castleboard Mansion. Uh, the house was built in 1760 by Bernard Ward and his wife Anne, but they couldn't agree on an architectural style. So part of the house is built in the classical style and part of it is in Gothic. And that goes right through the inside of the house as well as the outside of the house. As far as I know, it's a unique house. I've never, I've never seen another house like it. Everywhere you pass through hamlets and fishing villages that dot the coastline and valleys where Patrick travelled. And in a secluded valley east of Down Patrick are ancient healing wells and an old bathhouse. Strool wells are the oldest holy wells in Ireland. Obviously because St. Patrick arrived in this area, these would have been the first wells that he would have blessed. And they're said to have curative properties, in particular the eye well. So if you have any eye problems, people would come along here, even take some of the holy water away with them. At the end of the St. Patrick's Trail is Armagh, the Christian capital of Ireland. The two cathedrals in Armagh, you have the Church of Ireland Cathedral and the Catholic Cathedral and those are the seats of the, the bishops of both of the Catholic and the Church of Ireland churches and the cathedrals both have lovely locations perched on the top of two hills facing each other in Armagh and they can be visited very easily. Finally back at Downpatrick, on the hilltop beside the cathedral named after him, is the traditional gravesite of the world's most famous Irishman. Some people ask the question, is it really the grave of St. Patrick? I don't think there's anybody in Northern Ireland who doubts that it is. Needless to say, there's nobody knocking about nowadays who was there at the time he was buried. <laughs> Has it ever been authenticated? We don't need it. We believe it and absolutely and we accept it. Certainly it is clearly known and established that it's around that area that he did most of his work where he set up his first churches. It was his area and it was in that area that he died. So uh, that's as good a place to be buried as any. 
Along the way, we encountered a St. Patrick's Day parade, which reminded us that the celebrations are now worldwide. What would he think of it all? Some people say that he would turn in his grave, <laughs> but I think he would be quite flattered and he would probably be just totally incredulous at, at how he, his mission had such significance to Ireland, you know, for centuries and for the whole of Irish history ahead of him. For more information, visit our website on topoftheworld.net.